The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Are you ready to go deeper? The Back to the Basics Summer Series continues to unfold with Dr. Bill Winston. We're going to 4D. We're going to whatever's missing can be restored. Come on, we're going to when the devil shot his best shot. You said try it, devil. Try your best shot, and we're going to fix what's broke. You just know the God that you serve. He will deliver them. Experience the transformational power of understanding the fundamentals of faith in your everyday life through these timeless teachings by Dr. Bill Winston. Join us as we build your foundation and help you lay a path toward living victoriously as kingdom citizens. Join the journey, tune in every week, and share the inspiration with your friends. Hello, Bill Winston here. Welcome to another program. The program that you're watching is called The Believer's Walk of Faith, where we walk by faith, hallelujah, and not by sight. We have a powerful teaching today. We're teaching on the blessing and, and really inheriting your possessions, that which God has for you, you want to inherit. So we're talking about now specifically commanding the blessing. Now, this blessing is a complete opposite of the curse. If you want to see how powerful the blessing is, just look at the curse because that's what it is. It's, it's the, the, the blessing turned upside down. You know, when Adam sinned, all this curse was loose and it affected everything that swam, everything that flew, everything that crawled, every, it went all the way down to the DNA part. Why? Because that was that curse and how it affected this earth. Now, Look at the blessing because it's a reverse of that. That's why for you to truly remove the curse, you need the blessing. And that's what Jesus came to bring back to us because Adam had lost it, Abraham got it, and then Jesus brings it to all of the world because the blessing is meant for every person. If you're a human, you're breathing, that blessing is meant for you. But it only comes one way and that's through Christ. Praise God. Now, this is also the year of Jubilee. This is the year that really the things that are owed are paid off, that God is eliminating debt supernaturally. And you want to be in that number. Praise God. And we also are talking about God's host of angels called, he is called Jehovah Saba. And that host of angels, they help get things done in the earth. See, when you're talking about uh, protection, you're saying the angel of the Lord encamp around about me and keep me. See, that, that is all that's yours through the blessing. Well, let's get your Bible, Bibles and pencils of paper. Let's get it ready now. Take some good notes. It's called Commanding the Blessing. Let's go to it. So as God gave mankind this blessing and this blessing he put on Adam, he created Adam outside the garden and put him in the garden. That's very important put him in the garden. He said, dress it and keep it. Now he's got to replenish the earth. That's part of his assignment. He's got to replenish the earth. Now, when I say replenish, I mean perpetually renew and supply it. So the earth outside the garden with thorns and so forth, you know that because when Adam got put out, that's what he got. So Eden was a place of luxury. So Adam was to take Eden, which represents the presence of God, it's supposed to take Eden and spread Eden to all parts of the earth. It's supposed to take Eden everywhere. Now, he's not to leave Eden because that garden was going to go before him. He's going to be creating the garden as he goes. Say amen to that. Now, in that, Adam sinned, as you know, and because of his sin, the curse came. All right? No. The power of the blessing is someone's somewhat seen in the, in the result of the curse because it wasn't Satan that cursed the earth. Okay? The, the result of the blessing was the, was the, was the reason that the earth got cursed like it did. I'm just saying when Adam sinned. Now, the, everything was affected. Once that, once that curse hit, 
everything that crawls, everything that flies, everything, all the way down to the molecular level was, was contaminated. Everything. Now, how do you fix the curse? I'll give you three guesses and the first two don't count. Uh, how do you fix the curse? With the what? Blessing. It is the only thing powerful enough to fix it. Now, let, let's just look at something. Because you can't leave it up to the devil. Look what it says in Isaiah chapter 14. And I'll start reading at verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which diddeth weaken nations? Now, Lucifer weakened nations. Watch this. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend up to heaven, into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the, morn, uh, the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Watch this. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Now watch this. Yet you shall be brought down to hell and to the sides of the pit. Watch this. They that see thee will narrowly look upon thee and consider thee saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world a wilderness? That's important. That's important. Satan was behind making the world a wilderness. The first time and this time. So this, if you let Satan run it, he'll do all those things. He'll make the world a wilderness. Now look, look what God said. Something. God says this. Look at Romans chapter eight and verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Look at verse 22. He says, for we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain until now. Why is it travailing? It's travailing, waiting on the blessing. I'm in trouble. Help me. Well, who has the blessing? The church. Well, what up? What's up? I started to say, what up? What's up? <laughs> Excuse me. What? <laughs> well, well, what's up? Why aren't we doing something with it? One, the blessing can only be activated by faith. And faith only comes one way. By hearing and what? Hearing by the word of God. So if I got 12 spies, I send them out and, and 10 of them come back and start talking about some stuff that has nothing to do with the blessing, some stuff, so forth, religion, this and so forth and, and all this and never hear anything about the blessing. How are you going to have faith for the blessing so that you can move the things in the earth that God did not plan to be here and put that garden of Eden in their place? This blessing is on you. Now look what it says in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 33. Thus said the Lord God, in the day that you have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will cause you to dwell in the cities and the way shall be builded and the desolate land shall be tilled, where it lay desolate in the sight of all that pass by. And they shall say, this land that was desolate has become like the, like the, like the, and the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, the Lord, build ruined places. I plant that that was desolate and the Lord has spoken it. I have spoken it and I will do it. 
don't look at that situation and say, that's impossible. He can't clean up that neighborhood. Are you kidding me? He cleaned up a whole earth. But the problem is, is folks are without God. Folks in church don't have any faith. Faith for what? The blessing. Folks, you got to have faith for the word. If you want the word to work for you, you will have to have faith. If you want the name and you want the name to work for you, you better have faith in that name. Oh, the blood of Jesus is powerful. You can put a ring of blood around you and the Satan can't even touch you. And I'm saying that that blood has to be applied by faith. Amen. Say amen. amen. As a matter of fact, every bit of your inheritance comes by faith. Amen. Faith comes how? Amen. And hearing by what? Amen. Now, this blessing is so powerful that this blessing will take you to the top. All right, now, you see what God is doing? He's taking the earth and putting the earth back into the hands of its rightful owner. See, he's, he's taking you back to Eden. The enemy got the stuff through Adam's sin but now Jesus came. Once he came, he got everything back that Satan had taken. Now, I believe you can find that in, first, in, in Colossians chapter 2, and I want to say verse 15. Put it up on the board, please. Jesus having spoiled. What does spoil mean? It means to strip. It means not, not just take something. It means to strip them. Jesus spoiled principalities and powers and he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. All right, so he took back everything Satan stole and he didn't keep it to himself. Why? Because it wasn't him that was in the, in the garden. It was man. So he gave it back to his rightful owners. That blessing makes you the head. The head of what? The head of this earth. That, that, that in that blessing that comes on you, it's far above principalities and powers and every name that was named. So this, this revelation of that says that God can now transfer this stuff in your hand. So the first thing you do, you look at this thing and say, oh, Lord, how am I going, how am I going to buy that? You, you, you don't have to have their money system because right away you go to faith because faith becomes your currency. See, if, if you've got faith, you can buy anything. He will either give you the thing or the thing to get the thing. But what I'm, I'm saying is this, is this is already done now. Jesus has captured the whole earth. And when I start preaching that, somebody wrote me and sent me some stuff. Now, nah, well, we don't really own the earth. Who do you think owns it? See, see, what they did is they came back and they tried to make it fit their own logical thinking. But this is not designed to fit your thinking. This is designed to fit in God's thinking. God says, wait a minute, I'm going to arise and go over here and now you're going to possess this land. Now understand the king of Zion is on it, but it's your land and I want you to possess it. They're going to rent from you. They're going to buy from you. Come on. They, are you following what I'm saying? Now, this, this blessing is enabling us to take back everything that had been stolen from the garden, from Adam, and you and I are to take it back. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God. Revelation is the strongest asset of the school of faith. Re revelation makes you a revolutionary. 
Once you know what your rights are, you become irate. When, when you know what belongs to you, you'll go get it. And what transfers to you with faith is a title deed. Now, faith is a what? Assurance, what else? The confirmation, what else? The title deed. Say title deed. Title deed, title deed means you own it. Amen. You can present a title in a court of law and they will say that property belongs to you. In the court of heaven, faith is the title deed. And you've got the judge who is God and Satan who is the advocate. He's the uh, adversary. He's the prosecuting attorney going to tell you that doesn't belong to you. But if you can present some evidence and faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So I'm going to present a title deed. Folks, there's a court in heaven just like there's a court downtown, just like there's a court in the Supreme Court. Folks, they got the image from God. God is the head. The Bible says in Hebrews, he's a judge and he judges everything. And that's why when something happens to you, you can't agree with the adversary. If he says you're sick, you got to say by his strife, I'm healed. If you don't say you're healed, then Jesus, who's your advocate, who's your lawyer, don't have nothing to present before the judge for your case. You can't say what they say. Now, my point to you is, 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 is that this situation is going on, and so now you got to present a case because he's going to give you a piece of land you can't afford. He's going to give you a battle you can't win. God's going to do that because they have forgot God, but you got him in you. And you come speaking, saying, shouting, praying, you in taking back your land. Boy, you got to get this. All right, let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Lord have mercy. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Folks, when he says over in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 21, all things are yours. When he says over in Psalm chapter 115 verse 16, the heavens, even the heavens of the Lord, but the earth has he given to the children of men. When he said things like that, don't be trying to fix it up. Well, that's all spiritual thing. Wrong! One of the things he wants you to do is have a manifestation of the material wealth of this earth. Say, Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, okay, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above some of the nations of the earth. All of them. And all these blessings shall come on you and what? Overtake you. If you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. One man said, revelation without action is decoration. <laughs> oh, Edipo. <laughs> but look here. So they're going to come on you and what? Overtake you. Overtake you. That means to me, I'm not walking towards them. I think I'm, they come from behind. Watch this. So when I get the blessing, I have just become a money magnet. Amen. I become a wealth magnet. I watch this. I will draw resources. Come on. I'm, come on. I'm going to draw contracts. Amen. I'm going to draw things. Now, what am I saying here? I'm not appealing to greed. Amen. I'm saying you are blessed. Yes. And where people who are still under the curse have to struggle and hope that they can get things done, you don't have to do that. Amen. Because they're going to come to you in abundance. Amen. 
Come on over there. Deuteronomy chapter 8, uh, t- uh, chapter 28 and verse 8. Look at that one. And the Lord shall command the blessing upon you and your storehouses and all that you set your hands to. I said all that you set your hands to. And the word command is the word in the Hebrew, Savah, T-S-A-V-A-H, found in, in Strong's Concordance under 6680. It is a Hebrew word. It means to send with command. It means to appoint. It means to charge. It means to send a messenger. It means to put. It means to put in order. So God can command. And you're in a tight spot. He can command something on you. And you don't, I know you've got a time sensitive need, but he can command something. Say amen to that. And you find it over here in 1 Kings in chapter 17 and starting at verse 3. He said to the man of God, get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that that is before Jordan. And it shall be when thou shalt drink of the brook. I have what? Savah the ravens to what? Feed you where? There. Don't move. There. You just do what I say, and I got birds. And these birds, watch this. Look at the next part of it. So, verse 5, so he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelled by the brook Cherith, and that is before Jordan. Watch this. And the ravens brought him what? Bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and what? flesh in the evening and he drank of the brook and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land and now God is talking to him again. And look what God says the next time. And the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise and get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded Saba, the widow woman, to sustain you. I'm saying, wait a second, what is happening to our faith? Where is our faith in the blessing? Where is our faith in God's ability to command a contract, a a command, a time-sensitive need to be met? Where is our faith in that? It hadn't been preached. And if it's been, I'm telling you folks what we're experiencing now, we are experiencing money showing up in bank accounts. I've experienced it in here. And I just had a tape was given to me Friday. They said, Pastor, listen, this is happening in other places. This is one of the islands down the Caribbean islands. The pastor said, listen, money is showing up in my member's bank account. Said one of my members got a little over $7 million showing up in here. And listen, these, this money shows up and they have an audit trail for it. I'm talking about it's showing up. It's legitimate money. It's money. Listen, I'm telling you the supernatural. Now, why is that happening? One, because of the fact that we're in the jubilee, that everything that's been taken from Adam is given back to the last Adam. And you and I are the body of Christ. We're the ones that's going to take over from here and you're going to see cities being rebuilt again. Come on. He's not just giving you the money to buy 15 Cadillacs. He wants to build a nursing school. He wants to build the, the prisoners coming out. He wants to educate them. He wants to go to the cities that people have been kept down and locked out of a system. And he wants you to go right in the middle of it. Put up training centers in there. I'm telling you, he's making you rich to be a rich blessing to somebody else. Now, this stuff is going to start happening because angels are going to start moving like you've never seen them before. You better listen to your prophet. I'm telling you, people who are broke one day are going to be rich the next day. People who are hurting one day are going to be totally healed the next day. People who have been battling with depression one day are going to be full of joy from that day forward. I'm saying the blessing of Abraham is coming and we will get to the promised land.
Increase your confidence in the blessing to manifest all the promises of God for your life in Pastor Winston's dynamic teaching, Commanding the Blessing. To order your copy of this life-changing message on CD or MP3 on DVD or MP4, contact us online at BillWinston.org. You can also call us at 1-800-711-9327. Hello, this is Bill Winston. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Now you think, oh wait now. Uh, when I was a kid, I went to church with mom and dad, true enough. But when I got older, I found church was not in me. He, he, I had never personally received him as my Lord and Savior. Now one night I did, and when I did, everything changed. I'm saying if you're ready for a change in your life, I want you to receive Jesus. Just ask him this, Jesus, come into my heart. And when you do that, a miracle will take place, guaranteed. I want to send you my book. It's called Born Again and Spirit Filled. It'll tell you what the next steps are as a new believer. I want to be the first to say welcome to the family of God. God bless you. Revival is here. Join us for the 2024 International Faith Conference hosted by Dr. Bill Winston, Sunday, September 8th through Friday, September 13th, 2024. Inspired by Isaiah 61.4 NLT. This year's theme is Faith for Revival. Six generals of faith will release electrifying messages to supercharge your faith and transform your life. Each night, a sensational musical artist will lead us in worship, lifting our spirits as we press into a deeper connection with God. An unforgettable experience that you don't want to miss. Register now at ifc.billwinston.org to join us in person at Living Word Christian Center in Forest Park, Illinois, or online. A week of miracles, breakthroughs, and a revival like never before awaits you. We can't wait to see you there. Sometimes, as we grow in our Christian walk, we forget about the basics that got us there. Yet, the basics of our faith are the very foundation we need to be successful in our relationship with the Lord and with others, and to fulfill God's plan and purpose for our kingdom destiny. In this Back to the Basics series, a powerful compilation of 16 series of dynamic teachings by Dr. Bill Winston, you will learn how to renew and re-energize your Christian walk. Get your copy of this must-have series on USB. To order, go online at billwinston.org or call us at one 800 7119327 The mission of Bill Winston Ministries is to preach the gospel of the kingdom throughout the world. We invite you to become a partner and join Dr. Bill Winston as he trains believers how to live independent of this world system and have dominion over it. Thank you Bill Winston Ministry partners and viewers for your continuous support of the Believers Walk of Faith broadcast. Now remember, you need faith to get to your destiny. So don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our videos. This is Bill Winston. I love you and keep walking by faith.